What's up, dudes? Max here. So earlier this week, had a unique opportunity to jump down to WP's offices and get an early sneak peek at Ermac in Mortal Kombat 1. Big shout out to WP Games for the opportunity. We had a pretty limited period of time, a bit of an hour to an hour and a half or so. Uh, but just enough for me to get a pretty good idea of what the character is. One of them that I'm generally kind of more excited about in Mortal Kombat 1 and where they might be going with the game just overall. Now, I know there's gonna be a lot of questions. There's a combat cast happening later today, and there is seemingly a whole bunch of stuff that's changing in the game just in general, but in this build that we were playing, this wasn't even the full build you saw from the trailer. Movado was there, but not selectable, and uh, this is seemingly like the build that we're going to be getting of Mortal Kombat 1 this week when Ermac does drop. So the only impressions that I could really give you are focusing around Ermac Mac, how he is as a character and what they're sort of doing with these DLC characters moving forward. Um, and it's pretty good news. So I think the basis that I sort of have of MK1 characters and what is really fun in this game boils down to what they did with John Cena or sorry, Peacemaker. And Peacemaker is an insanely fun character, in my personal opinion. Just a whole bunch of launcher options, a lot of ways to convert damage, pretty good amount of speed and mobility, and it's like, yeah, man, like it really feels like this character kind of has it all. And there's just so much to work with here. I, I, I love it. In comparison to some other characters that feel like kind of dry, uh, even Havoc is a character that I played a lot and had a lot of success with, but I can easily admit that Havoc doesn't have like a ton of options, you know, even if you put in a whole bunch of different cameos and stuff. So I am very happy <laughs> to report that Ermac is crazy. Maybe not as crazy as older iterations that we have been reviewing and going over, MKX, MK9 Ermac, um, but still there is so much to this character that I was in the lab for about 90 minutes straight and I could have easily had spent 90 minutes or more figuring out different routes, finding new things, discovering new stuff, and figuring out where they're going with this character because on first glance, you feel like you have an idea of what it is, and then there's all these hidden friggin' attributes that the character's got that makes him ridiculously fun. I had to review the trailer a couple times because there's some snippets in the trailer that are not in his move list that sort of give you hints at this stuff, so it's like, whoa. Um, so first and foremost, uh, Ermac is kind of a unique character, similar to, I'm pretty sure this was the same way with Peacemaker. The dude has no immediate low starters. He does have a natural overhead and some pretty powerful mids, and he's very good from like this mid-range distance. He's super powerful from mid-range, but he doesn't have any inherent low combo starters by default. Uh, instead, there's something kind of similar to Quan Chi, and I'm trying to remember if this was the case with Quan Chi. I didn't put a ton of time into the character, where Quan Chi had some attack where you had to burn two bars to effectively like open somebody up, but the chance of you opening somebody up with that, that attack was pretty high if you were willing to spend that meter. Ermac is the exact same way, and before I get into some move list stuff and sort of what he's got, he does have this move in the air, uh, only in the air, where he sort of like dive bombs the ground, similar to almost every other version of Ermac. This one's a little bit different though. Uh, it's a low, right? It is a low. It's a super unsafe low that travels across the screen, but if you meter burn it, it's a capture state meaning that you can re-stand people into full combo starter. It's like a grounded low version of like lift and they sort of just stick there. The only problem with it is that it costs two bars. Why is that the case with Ermac speaking on a general fundamental level of what makes this character interesting? Well, it's because the dude has a billion overheads <laughs> and it isn't just combo string overheads. Let me explain. Ermac has a super dynamic flight mode. I haven't played a ton of the flight mode characters in this game, like Natara, to see how crazy it gets, but Ermac's flight mode is nuts. The amount of stuff you can cancel into it, the stagger strings that lead from it, he can enter and exit flight mode ridiculously fast, and it's almost necessary in some of his bigger combo opportunities to enter flight mode in the air and then exit it after an attack to continue and get higher damage. It makes him ridiculously fun, um, but there is a little bit of execution to it. The flight mode isn't a crazy input. It's just, I think, down back two if you're in the air in general. 
Uh, but I was having a lot of fun with it. And there is some options from flight mode in general that you do get from like attacks and stuff like that, just to make your approach a little bit more nuanced. So if you combine all these things with each other, this game doesn't inherently have a push block. Movado was not in here to see if the push block thing is universal and there was no big change list or moves that we had to mess around with in this in this build. We'll probably know more about the combat cast very soon if that, if that push block thing is Movado specific. I hope it's not. But with that not being the case, dude, like Ermac can enter this flight mode from so many different ways and methods. And then if you choose to commit to the low, right? If you choose to eventually land from this flight mode and apply your pressure, well, if you spend two bars, you can hit the ground and then do a full combo capture state. Was his damage insane? No, this was not a peacemaker situation where within like the first 30 minutes of me playing this character, like why am I cracking 400 plus damage like mid screen with no bar? <laughs> what the heck is going on? Uh, that didn't seem to be the case with Ermac. Ermac seems to be relatively normal damage character where if you get a proper decent hit with him, um, even with, I think it was either one meter or no meter, he's breaking 300 damage, which is just fine. That sort of reminds me a lot of the way Ermac was in Mortal Kombat X. Like the mystic version of Ermac had a lot of utility, but he did not get a ton of damage as a result. You got effectively like 28 to maybe 35% damage on every single hit. That sort of feels like what they're going for here. But good Lord, dude, the conversions, the amount of different launcher options, if there's one thing I was hoping from Peacemaker, that they're gonna give characters way more ways to get into combos, much less more hits that lead to opportunities that will go into damage. That definitely seems like it's the case with Armac, just in general, where some characters in the game feel like they have one launcher option, you know, for the most part, outside of generic jump in threes or fours. This is not the case with Armac, dude. He's got a lot of different weird, crazy launchers that go into a variety of stuff, unique cancel opportunities, unique opportunities to dash forward, and oh my god, this character's dash is insane. It doesn't cover a huge distance, but this is one of the things that gave us an impression from the trailer that the game is just moving way faster, and yeah, Ermac's overall speed does feel relatively quickened. I don't have a one-to-one -one direct comparison of the other characters. We didn't get that much time to mess around with stuff. Um, but it does feel like the, the dash speed on this character is absolutely wild. So you're able to get some very interesting dash forward attack sort of combo opportunities that maybe not every other character in the game sort of gets access to, which is quite fun. So overall, I, I think we have a really enjoyable character here. It also seems like Ermac's customizable options are probably gonna be his mask from what I could tell from the menu. We couldn't show that much, but it definitely seems like this dude is gonna have some really cool sick masks and stuff like that, which is uh, the best thing you could have changed. Dude, if we got Ermac and the only thing you could change was his like feet or his like belt, that would have been insanely disappointing. But luckily, like most of the ninjas in Mortal Kombat, you can change the mask. So thank God. Um, I'm relatively excited about this. I'm really looking forward to jumping in and playing this. Uh, Peacemaker, when he came out, dropped the same day as Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So my life got flipped, turned upside down during all of that shit. And Ermac is luckily coming out in a sweet spot right now where there's just not a lot of other stuff happening. And I just get to jam on Mortal Kombat 1 for a bit and go back and relearn stuff and see how crazy Janet Cage is with all the combo extensions. Mind you, the same exact thing happened here when I was playing this character behind the scenes that happened with Peacemaker. I was not even utilizing cameos. There wasn't even assists going into the different combos and opportunities and stuff. And granted, it already seems like Kung Lao would be pretty good because Ermac naturally is a big mid-heavy character with overheads and stuff like that. There's gonna be a lot of high blocking. So yeah, Kung Lao is obviously one of the better assists and cameos that you could possibly use, but I'm thinking there's gonna be a ton of creativity with combo extensions. And what we've already seen with Movado seems ridiculously exciting. How many things were ambush assists? I did try to check out some of the other assists in the game. It didn't seem like they changed that much. I was hoping that there was gonna be a twist to the rest of the game and we might be able to see more characters get more ambush assists. I don't think we're gonna go through that giant overhaul just yet, at least from this version of the game I played. But still, Movado wasn't even in here, you know? So we only got so much of an impression to sort of report on as of right now. But I am fairly happy in explaining that 
yeah, the way Ermac looks and the way he moves is pretty sick. I, I giving you some examples of some of the special moves and combos and things that you can do throughout this video. Some of the stuff that I found personally uh, pretty cool is this anti-air move he has where he uh, puts his knees on the floor and all these souls fly out of him, right? This isn't just an anti-air attack. It's also a mid-combo juggle extension. So if they're in the air and you juggle, you can do this attack and get more stuff after. But it's got a unique ability because Ermac has had this in previous games where he does like charge up attacks or certain specials and you can dash cancel out of it. And yes, this move was dash cancelable. Meaning that if you land it as an anti-air and then properly dash cancel after, you're getting full combo conversion, which is fun. That's pretty cool. If you put it in the middle of a combo and use it to uh, capitalize on an opportunity after the hit, you can dash cancel forward and pick up for a juggle and get a proper ender or something like that. That's hella fun, dude. When, when we discovered that, I had to pick that up from the trailer. They do it in the trailer, but it was hard to identify if that was exactly a thing. Um, yeah, that's what's happening. Most of his combos and conversions you see where he's like teleporting up and down from air combos are just built naturally into his strings, which is something that is fairly similar to MKX slash MK9 Ermac. MK9 Ermac has these like pop you up and throw you around specifically in strings. He's got a lot of that here. Um, ultimately, we got a really powerful and a really fun mid-range combo conversion character this time around. I don't know if he's going to be as much of a Vortex Heavy, just because, you know, the low conversion in general doesn't lead to uh, anything without using a ton of meter. But still, it looks like this is a control character this time. Sort of similar to what Mystic Ermac, I think that's the one, was in Mortal Kombat X. And I'm really excited. Anyway, I can't wait to be making more MK1 videos. I'm sort of happy with the direction of all these DLC characters. Um, I, I did feel that Omni-Man was really fun, but, it, you know, felt like an MK1 character. And it feels like John Cena, as well as Ermac, are characters definitely going, I say to a degree, Quan Chi. They're characters that are definitely going in an exciting direction and leaves me much more positive about the future of this game than we sort of have been over the past, you know, three to six months. So all I got to say is, dude, if these characters are this much fun. I cannot wait for Takeda. But we got to wait for that. Homelanders first. Until then, thank you dudes a ton for watching. I'll be back with more gameplay breakdowns, combos, and stuff as we figure out story mode stuff as soon as he drops this week. And uh, if you enjoy this stuff, I appreciate a like or thumbs up on the video. Seriously, it helps a ton. I'll be back with more later, and I'll see you next time.